Hey everyone, Phil from Ember Prototypes here. So we put out a YouTube short video a while back talking about how we put our SLA 3D printer, or at least our small one, in a kind of makeshift fume hood and how that solves a lot of issues with ventilation, fumes, smells. So I wanted to make a more in-depth, longer video just talking about this and why I think it's such a good thing to have. We work in this workshop a lot and oftentimes we're in here doing some other work while we're 3D printing something or while we're washing something in IPA in the wash stations, uh, these two guys or the big one over here. And without this DIY fume hood, it really would be terrible to work in here, even though we have great ventilation. Like we've got, we've got exhaust for the laser cutter, getting filtered and then going outside. We've got two very high power vents uh, on the ceilings installed in our workshop, it's still quite smelly if parts are being washed and they're air drying outside. So I really think that, you know, if you're doing any kind of 3D printing, even in your house, whether it's FDM or SLA, uh, you can benefit a lot from buying one of these grow tents and then putting your machines inside. So I'll just talk a little bit about kind of what we did to set this up, uh, how it works, and I'll throw links to the description down below for all the products that we bought in order to put this together. Hopefully this helps everybody and let's get to it. Okay, so this is the grow tent that we have. They come in different sizes. Uh, this one happened to fit our bench, our workspace, and then also all the machines that we wanted inside. So the brand is Vivo Sun. If you look on Amazon, they're a very well-known brand for grow tents, carbon filters, that kind of stuff. So it comes with a flap that you can use as a door. Now what we've done is we've actually put magnets on here so that we can open it up halfway and hold it up. So if any of you are familiar with fume hoods that are used in a lab safety setting, they often have what's called a sash and the sash is movable. Uh, and the reason for this is because if you have a fan that's pulling negative pressure in here, there's a minimum height that the sash needs to be in order to have proper airflow sucking air outside in to keep you safe. Uh, this is kind of a way of emulating that a little bit. It's not as good, but it's decent. So we've got magnets there, and then we've also got magnets here at a second height so that we can fully open the whole thing and the, the lid stays up there. Um, usually I only need to lift it halfway, but when I'm washing really big parts in this guy for the large SLA machine, I do need to throw it all the way up. So let me just do that right now. It's hard to do while holding the camera. I'll throw it up and then we'll continue. All right. So I've thrown the cover all the way up. And now you can see we've got our large bucket of IPA here for the big SLA. That's like 20 liters of IPA. Uh, we've got our Form 3, and then we have our two automated wash stations here. And then we've got all our supplies and stuff. Now, how this grow tent comes to you is it comes flat packed and it comes with a bunch of metal rods. And then you just kind of put it together like a tent. So the really nice thing about these grow tents is that they actually all have, you can see here, they come with pre-assembled vent holes. Like there's one also up here that I've actually cut and taped, um, but they come with holes that you can hook up ducts and carbon filters to. So. You can buy this grow tent and then you can also buy the carbon filter that Vivo Sun sells for agriculture or growing applications. Um, if you don't have a way to vent it outside, that's a good way to kind of keep everything in here, but then also vent the stuff out if you need to. So what we did is we, we just hooked up a six inch axial fan. So this is also from Vivo Sun and we hooked it up there and we've got a hole in the wall of our workshop where we vent everything out. 
So this sucks air out of the grow tent, creates negative pressure and makes sure that nothing, no fumes that are being generated in here leak out into the workspace. They all go outside. We also put a little duct in here and 3D printed just kind of a little end cap. This isn't really necessary, but we just wanted to have the suction kind of more in the middle uh, so that it will get fumes coming out of the sky if one is open. So yeah, kind of how our workflow would be is we set up a print, it'd be printing, let's say we're printing something and also washing something at the same time. We'll set everything up, we'll just close the sash and then we've actually got the power for the fan on a Wi-Fi plug. So we can turn it on and off whenever we want. We can set a schedule so that, you know, if we forget to turn it off, it'll turn off. I think in our case, we have it set to every time it turns on after an hour and a half, it'll turn off um, or something like that. So most of the time when we run it, we actually don't run it when only when we're printing something. It kind of depends. Some resins, some resins are extremely smelly. Uh, and for those resins, we will keep this sash closed. And that by itself does a pretty good job of keeping fumes out of our workspace. But then, but then we'll just turn those two vents on to keep the whole workshop here fresh and safe for us to work in. And simply by closing the sash that does, and having those vents on, that does a good enough job for us to be in here and, and feel okay. The, the main time that we turn that on is when we're washing stuff and things are air drying. So we'll wash apart, it'll come out and it'll air dry. Uh, and we'll close the sash and we'll turn the fan on and it'll run by itself for around an hour and a half and then turn itself off. And this is actually great because the IPA is super smelly, so much so that, you know, even when the sash is closed and also the vents are on, we can still smell it. The other benefit of that is then your parts will air dry faster because there's actually some airflow that's being uh, moved throughout the, the fume hood. So yeah, that's kind of the rundown of, of our setup. I think, again, you know, whether it's an SLA machine or whether it's FDM machine, I think that there can be big benefits, safety and health wise for having one of these. The other nice thing is that sometimes we do metal work. So we've got a CNC machine there. We've got a CNC plasma in the corner over there. And you can see some sheets of metal that we recently cut. Um, and so sometimes we will have to deburr and grind metal and we're kind of short on space. So we basically do it here and we have like a little DIY makeshift like dust containing thing. Uh, but the nice thing about having this, having our machines in here is that you can just totally zip this guy up and any dust that I generate here won't get inside onto the more sensitive machines that are in there. Now, obviously we have our other machines that are open, which is why I mentioned earlier, we have this like dust containment system, but it's still nice to be able to close the sky and really make sure that nothing gets in. So yeah, again, I think that this is super helpful. We love it. It works really well in our process. It makes me feel safe and not nauseous when I'm working in here while printing and washing stuff. So I'll throw links to everything in the description below and thanks for watching. Hope this helps.